Hello and welcome to this Cancer Grace webinar. My name is Bish Chera. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Radiation Oncology at the University of North Carolina School of Medicine in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. I'm also the associate chair for clinical operations and improvement and the director of patient safety and quality in my department. I uh, have expertise clinically and academically in treating and doing research treating head and neck cancer patients and doing research in the clinical, uh, the clinical field of uh, head and neck oncology. I'm a radiation oncologist uh, by profession. The next topic I'd like to talk about is what data do we have now about HPV-related head and neck cancer treatments? What are the most promising ongoing studies of HPV and which would you go on, which one should you go on or which one would I go on if I was a patient? So, we now know that there's a rising incidence of the human papillomavirus infection in the throat uh, of, 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 pay, of people now, and that there's increasing, rapid increasing incidence of HPV-associated cancer. And so this is a picture. This is a tonsil cancer, okay? This is the tongue. This is the uvula. And you can see here this cancer, hexaphytic cancer growing in the tonsil. There are many different ways to treat cancer of the tonsil and base of tongue. Uh, the most uh, standard approach is to receive chemotherapy and radiation. Most institutions have adopted this treatment as the standard treatment as it is, is the least invasive uh, treatment uh, and it preserves the organs and normal tissue functions the best. The standard radiation dose is typically 70 gray, gray is unidose radiation, given at 2 gray per day, and you're treated Monday through Friday, typically five treatments a week, 35 treatments, seven weeks long. Often chemotherapy will be given concurrently with the radiation if you have uh, stage three or four disease, and the most common chemotherapy regimen is cisplatin, 100 milligrams per meter squared given in three doses during the seven week course. So you get 100 milligrams per meter squared, usually week one, then week three you get another dose, and then week six you get another dose. After you finish your seven week course of chemotherapy and radiation, you will typically have a PET CT scan performed 12 weeks post treatment to assess whether you uh, the disease response and if the cancer is gone at that point you're observed if there is some questionable residual cancer typically you'll be sent to an ENT surgeon to have um, a, a limited surgery to remove any residual cancer so I've sh we I've shown in my other other topics with this uh, other uh, uh, sections of this talk uh, this webinar that HPV associated head and neck cancer have a more favorable prognosis, especially if you have a minimal smoking history and your cancer control rate can be as high as greater than 90%. So there's now much interest knowing that we are uh, curing many people with this type of cancer uh, with whether we can reduce the amount or the intensity of treatment that we give patients. And this is my area of expertise in research. Though we cure many people, most people will live a long time, and we're thankful for that, but they will also suffer from the toxicities of radiation and chemotherapy. And the toxicities and the de decrement in quality of life can be significant. So if we're curing a lot of people, we're likely over-treating them. So if there's a way we can reduce, safely reduce the amount of radiation and chemotherapy can in patients and still maintain high cancer control, then we, it's a win-win situation for our patients. And, and it, if you want to hear more of my thoughts on the scientific rationale for deintensifying the the uh, deintensification of radiation and chemotherapy in uh, in a HPV associated oropharyngeal carcinoma, I refer you to this onco to oncology tube video uh, where you can hear me speak on this topic in more detail. So clinical studies, there are lots of options now for patients who have HPV associated oropharyngeal carcinoma. Uh, there are, I list here what I think are the major ongoing or recently closed studies evaluating whether we can re evaluating de-intensified strategies for treatment of this kind of cancer. This is, not a comp this is not a comprehensive list. There are other studies out there, 
but I think that these are the major ones that uh, are, are ongoing or have closed. Again, I remind you the standard treatment is 70 gray radiation with high dose cisplatin. <clears throat> One approach for deintensifying treatment is to give more chemo, what we call induction chemo, and less radiation. So this approach, more chemo, less radiation, is kind of a trade-off. We intensify one treatment regimen while de-intensifying the radiation. And so in the end, this may not really be a reduction in intensity of treatment. There are large groups, there are large cooperative groups that also uh, are studying uh, these uh, different uh, regimens. Another regimen, a uh, recently closed study, national study by the RTOG cooperative group, is to, it was to reduce intensity by giving a more targeted chemotherapy called cetuximab or Herbitux, which has uh, been reported to have less side effects than the standard cisplatin chemotherapy. Again, the limitation of this study and this approach is that the radiation dose isn't reduced. The radiation dose is still 70 gray. We're just substituting a more, maybe less toxic <clears throat> anti-cancer therapy uh, for, uh, for cisplatin. And again, and again, this also may not be much of a reduction in intensity of treatment as most of the long-term side effects are related to radiation therapy causing dry mouth and swallowing problems. The next big approach is incorporating surgery. And again, another trade-off. This approach is we give surgery first, see how the surgery goes. After the surgery, you may not receive radiation or chemo. You may receive radiation or you may receive radiation and chemo. Again, the trade-off here being that we're going to reduce the radiation and chemo by adding surgery. This also may not be much of a deintensification in the end. At UNC, uh, and in, in my uh, and in with my collaborators, uh, we have led the uh, the effort in reducing both radiation and chemotherapy for the treatment of HPV-associated head and neck cancer. And I'll talk more about that later. But I think that the two biggest approaches that are being studied are adding surgery and reducing radiation and chemo, or the approach that we have uh, pioneered and led at UNC of reducing radiation and reducing chemo. So the largest uh, and I think one of the mo most important deintensification clinical trials that is ongoing right now that you can actually join is this ECOG study, and I briefly discussed it uh, on the previous slide. But what they're doing is that they're taking HPV-associated head, neck, cap, base of tongue, and tonsil cancers. Everyone is getting surgery. If after surgery the pathologist says you have very limited cancer, you will receive no further treatment. If pathology report shows that you have high risk features in your cancer, you receive radiation and chemo. And if your pathology report is somewhere in between high risk and low risk, you will get radiation alone. Of course, avoiding radiation and chemotherapy is a major deintensification. And if we can do that, that is a very good approach. But as you, it's very hard it's very, very few patients actually are able to avoid radiation and chemotherapy after surgery. So on this study, they reported as of April 2015 that at that point, they had 135 patients enrolled. They are now, they've accrued a lot more. Only 11 patients who enrolled in this study were, were, were able to avoid radiation and chemotherapy. So as a patient, if you're going to have surgery first, either off, off study or on study, you have to, you know, be, you know, you have to be, you have to understand that uh, there is a very low chance that you will be able to avoid radiation and chemotherapy um, after surgery. I think the other major uh, clinical trial that one can enroll on uh, are the uh, deintensification studies that we do here at UNC and with our collaborators across the country, where we take very favorable risk patients, those who are HPV positive, who are minimal smokers, and we reduce radiation and chemotherapy. We do not give extra chemo up front. We do not do surgery up front. This is a pure reduction in the radiation and chemotherapy. 
So patients on our studies, they receive 60 gray of radiation over six weeks instead of the standard 70 in seven weeks, which is a 10 gray reduction. The chemotherapy is reduced from 300 milligrams per meter squared to 180. So instead of giving 100 milligrams in, in, uh, 100 milligrams three times during radiation, we give low dose weekly cisplatin at 30 milligrams, six weekly doses. And so the chemotherapy, there's a 40% reduction in the chemotherapy dose uh, and the uh, UNC regimen of deintensification. We have published our preliminary uh, first uh, phase two results with excellent outcomes. Uh, around 44 patients were enrolled in our, in our first study and all patients are alive with no evidence of cancer with two years of follow-up for the patients on the study. And so at UNC, we continue to treat patients with this UNC regimen on, on clinical trials and we have several new generations of deintensified chemotherapy radiation studies, but the basic backbone of 60 gray of radiation and low-dose cisplatin chemotherapy is used. Our results are published in, the, in, in a, in the, in a high-impact radiation oncology journal, and this is the uh, headlines of the editorial uh, that you may also read uh, in Peru's at your own leisure. The, uh, the uh, cooperative groups are now studying the UNC regimen in a large national phase two randomized study. This is the Energy Oncology Group. They are taking favorable risk HPV positive or pharynx cancer patients and randomizing them to the UNC regimen versus a radiation alone regimen. And so this is another study that is currently enrolling patients that uh, a patient may be interested in. 